the military options. For that part of the story, I spoke a short time ago to retired Lieutenant General James Dubik. He's a senior fellow at the Institute for the Study of War. Thank you very much um, for coming in, General. How much do we know about what the Syrians have in terms of chemical weaponry? Well, I'm sure that our intelligence agencies know a lot more than we do when, than we know reading the newspaper. Uh, but there's always a degree of ambiguity. We may uh, know to a degree of 85, 90 percent of what they have and what they're using, but there's always some element uh, of the unknown. And do you think we would know where those stockpiles are stored? Well, I think we would know their production facilities. I think we would know their uh, habitual or historical storage facilities. But it's entirely possible that uh, some facilities that we don't know about or some weapons that be stored in some uh, facility that's not an actual storage spot. Okay, I've been struck in the last few days by the strength of the rhetoric coming out of the White House. We heard it again from Leon Pianetta today. The Americans very clearly drawing a red line here. Yeah. You cannot use these weapons. And, and as Panetta said today, suggesting they have intelligence that that might be part of the yeah. Syrian plan. So what are the military options for taking out those chemical stockpiles? Well, are I, there any? Well, I don't see the military option of occupying Syria, imposing security uh, as really a viable option. Uh, being considered. So short of that, what you're really talking about is some sort of air campaign, maybe in conjunction with selected rebel groups or not. Uh, and that's about it right now for military options. Is it possible to take out the chemical weapons sites? That depends on the type of weapons and where they're stored. Uh, the real issue here now is uh, we have to set the force, so to speak get the surveillance in place, get the logistics in place, put the air defense in place. The Patriots may well be the first step. Pull the aircraft together, manned and unmanned, get the search and air rescue together. Put all that uh, in preparation so that if a decision is made, uh, the military force is uh, ready to execute. But I'm assuming that there's a risk involved with bombing sites that may Absolutely. contain chemical weapons, Absolutely. right? I mean, these things yeah. can be dispersed in the Absolutely. air. Absolutely. And depending on the type of uh, weapon we're talking about, each uh, or a chemical weapon, each one has a different protocol for attack. And really best not to talk about operational kind of details ahead of time, but it is not easy and it is uh, complicated and it would pose risk because the Syrian air defense system is relatively robust. And, and what's the risk of these being dispersed? If you strike at a chemical weapons plant, could you then cause knock-on damage to civilians it, living in the area? It could happen. Uh, again, depending on the agent and depending on the attack protocol, you'd want to minimize that. But uh, as surgical as strikes would be, they're really every time some degree of risk. Okay, James Dubik, thank you very much for coming Welcome. in to thank join you. us. Quick look at some other news now from around the world. The head of Afghanistan's intelligence service.